this video I'm going to discuss routed ports on Ethernet switches. In this Genesis 3 topology I have two iOS V layer 2 switches and an iOS V router. The devices have no configuration so they've just booted up and I'll bypass the initial configuration dialog on the router. And let's start by configuring host names on the switches. And I'll configure a host name on the router. So no configuration has been done on these devices at all. They are using the default configuration and I've simply changed the host name. So show CDP neighbors on switch one shows me that switch two is available on the gigabit zero zero interface. CDP was advertising switch two with the name switch until I changed it. On switch two, show CDP neighbor. We can see switch one connected to gigabit zero zero. We don't see the router on gigabit zero one because a router's interfaces are shut down by default. Show interface gigabit zero zero switch port. Here's the command. We can see that the interface is enabled as a switch port. It's using dynamic auto DTP mode or dynamic trunking protocol mode. The VLAN that the port belongs to is VLAN one because it wasn't able to negotiate trunking with switch two. There are no trunks configured on the switch. So show interface gigabit zero zero switch port we can see that it's a static access port. Negotiation of trunking is enabled, but it hasn't negotiated trunking with the other side. The interface belongs to VLAN one. On switch two, we would see something similar. So show interface gigabit zero zero switch port. The interface is enabled as a switch port using dynamic order mode. So when we look at the VLANs, at the moment, only VLAN one and the other default VLANs are configured on the switches. We're not gonna worry about FDDI and token ring in these videos. What I could do is create a switched virtual interface or SVI. You do that by using the interface VLAN command. We can see that the interface has gone down but what I could do is configure an IP address on this interface and then no shut it. I could then also do something similar, create an SVI or switched virtual interface for VLAN one and give the switch an IP address and no shut the SVI. Interfaces come up on both sides, so we should be able to ping switch two from switch one. There's the ping again, and we should be able to ping switch one from switch two. So the physical interface is a layer two interface. Gigabit zero zero is enabled as a switch port interface. It's a layer two interface. It supports protocols such as spanning tree. Notice this port is the root port on switch two and it's forwarding. Show spanning tree here shows that gigabit zero zero is the designated port on this switch and it's also forwarding. Protocols such as DTP and spanning tree run across switch ports or layer two ports. But what I could do as an example on switch two is make the port a routed port by using the command no switch port. Interfaces come up, and now when we type the command show interface gigabit zero zero switch port, notice we told that the switch port is disabled. Whereas on this side, it's still enabled as a switch port, and we can see the access VLAN that the port belongs to. We'll also be able to see whether it becomes a trunk, but that's not true on a routed port. Another difference between a routed port and a switch port is you can configure an IP address directly 
on the interface. So do show run interface gigabit zero zero. Notice it's disabled as a switch port and an IP address has been configured directly on the interface. Whereas if I try that here and try and configure an IP address, it's not recognized. So at this point, I'll just change that IP address to make it consistent because this is switch two. But notice the IP address command is not available on this side because it's currently a switch port. But if I type no switch port and then IP address, notice I can configure the IP address on the interface. Do show interface gigabit zero zero switch port. It is disabled as a switch port, but I can ping switch two through that interface. So show spanning tree. Notice spanning tree is not enabled on gigabit zero zero. Previously, gigabit zero zero was a designated port, but now it's not shown in the output because spanning tree and dynamic trunk protocol do not run on routed ports. So gigabit zero zero does also not appear on this side. Show run interface gigabit zero zero shows us that an IP address is configured on the interface. If I enable this port as a switch port and look at the running config of that interface again, notice the IP address has been removed and spanning tree is running on that interface once again. So interface gigabit zero zero, no switch port, IP address 10.1.2.2. Show spanning tree. Spanning tree is not running on gigabit zero zero. And I should be able to ping switch one. So show IP interface brief shows us that this interface has an IP address configured on it. Whereas this interface is a layer two interface and the SVI, or switched virtual interface, is used as the layer three interface. So show VLAN brief. Notice gigabit zero zero is not in the list of interfaces that belong to VLAN one. This interface gigabit zero one is a layer two interface and belongs to VLAN one and has this as its layer three IP address. So basically when you type no switch port, you are turning that interface into a routed interface so it acts like a router. So gigabit zero one now is configured as a routed interface and on a router we would do something very similar. No shut the interface and configure an IP address directly on the interface and we should be able to ping switch two through that routed interface, which we can. We could also enable a routing protocol. So I'll enable EIGRP on all interfaces. Could do the same here. Router EIGRP one and enable EIGRP on all interfaces. So show IP EIGRP interfaces, it's enabled on all interfaces and a neighbor relationship has been established. Show IP EIGRP neighbor. The neighbor relationship is established on the gigabit zero one interface, not on the SVI. But once again, if we changed gigabit zero zero to a switch port and then enabled EIGRP on this side, notice the difference in the neighbor relationships. So show IP EIGRP neighbor. No neighbor relationship is established because I need to make this a switch port to put them back in the same subnet. So let's check our pings. Can router two ping router one? At the moment it can't and that's probably because of spanning tree. 
Notice the port is learning. So we've got to wait for spanning tree to converge before EIGRP can form a neighbor relationship. Routed ports, however, don't use spanning tree. So they will converge quicker than a spanning tree port will. So the convergence has just taken place. EIGRP neighbor relationship is established. So show IP EIGRP neighbor. Notice the difference. This neighbor, which is switch one, has been learnt on a VLAN one, whereas the router has been learnt on the gigabit zero one interface. So show run interface gigabit zero zero and zero one. Notice the difference. Switch port is enabled on gigabit zero zero. No switch port has been configured on gigabit zero one. When we ping from switch two to switch one, we're using the SVI interface. But when we ping from switch two to router one, we're using the physical interface. So router ports are typically used between switches and routers. For example, where a router connects you to the internet. Switched virtual interfaces and switch port interfaces are typically used in a campus environment where you need to tag multiple VLANs across an interface. A routed port doesn't have the concept of VLANs. There are no VLANs, you don't run spanning tree and you don't run DTP or dynamic trunk protocol. The port is a routed port in the same way that you configure a routed port on a router. So again, show IP EIGRP neighbor. Notice the difference in how the neighbor relationships are formed. I hope you found this video useful. If it's been of benefit to you, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.